Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about the management and complication of abrupt show placenta. So as we discussed previously in the previous part of abrupt show placenta that what is this condition, what is the clinical picture is there. So in this part we will discuss what all complications are associated with this condition and how we can diagnose this condition and how to be managed the woman with this abrupt show placenta. So the diagnosis in the abrupt show placenta is mainly clinical. Yes, ultrasonography is there but uh, it is not the confirmatory one because uh, if the revealed type of variety is there in which the blood is almost coming out, yes. So in that situation we cannot identify any blood which is collected behind the placenta. So it is not be conclusive one but it may be very beneficial for concealed type of bleeding uh, in which the blood is usually collected behind the placenta but it is not necessary that in each ultrasono scan uh, we can identify that retroplacental hematoma. So sometime it may be missed on the basis of that we cannot exclude the condition of abrupt show placenta. So the diagnosis of this condition is mainly clinical because we already discussed what all clinical picture is there that the woman is having intense pain because of abruption because the placenta is going to be separate here. So there is a uh, uterine contraction that causes pain that, uh, that can be mild to severe and uh, there is a tense, uh, tense, tender and woody hard uterus on abdominal palpation because uh, the tonicity of the uterus is increases in this situation. The tonicity increases it means there is no relaxation in between two contraction. So the uterus remain hard. So uh, the uterus is woody hard and uh, the height of the uterus may be disproportionate to the week of gestation if the concealed type of hemorrhage is there and the fetal heart sound may be decreased because of decreased amount of blood flow toward the placenta as the placenta gets separated. So there may be a sign of fetal distress or even fetal death could be seen. So these all clinical picture indicates that the woman may have abruption. So ultrasonography is there but 100% it is not the confirmatory one or we cannot uh, come to the conclusion that by seeing ultrasonography scan we can identify that uh, the woman is having abruption. It is basically important for ruling out whether the placenta previa is there or not because it is uh, important to locate the placental site. Where is the placenta? Because uh, if the placenta previa is there, in that condition uh, we cannot examine uh, the cervical region of the woman, we cannot put our finger into the vagina. So in that condition ultrasonography is very beneficial. Now let's talk about what all complications are associated with this condition. So if we look on toward the maternal aspect then there is heavy bleeding. It means the woman is having hemorrhage, bleeding. So if the bleeding is too heavy then uh, the woman can land up in shock, hypovolemic shock. So with this decreased blood volume the woman may have less perfusion toward the major organ and that can lead into the renal failure. So women may have anuria, oliguria because uh, the volume is not up to that mark that uh, the organ is perfusing very well. So in such condition uh, kidney failure could be there yes and uh, sometime what happened this decrease in blood volume may not perfuse pituitary gland even though. And in that condition what happened there may be a necrosis of pituitary gland. This may lead into the lactation failure as an initial symptom. So this is called as Sheehan syndrome. Okay. So the necrosis of pituitary gland that is Sheehan syndrome could be seen uh, if there is a hypovolemic shock. The woman may complicate with DIC disseminated intravascular coagulation as we discussed previously also that uh, because we have seen that thromboplastin is released from placental tissue that will enter into the maternal circulation and there it forms clot. Yes, so these clot 
block these vessels and inhibits the blood flow toward the major organ so uh, when these clotting factors are needed they are not in use because these all are used up so the woman may have dic disseminated intravascular coagulation and uh, postpartum hemorrhage after the delivery of baby it could be there because uh, because of this dic what happened uh, as these clotting factors are used up when they are needed they are not in use okay so the woman may have heavy bleeding after the delivery of baby because uh, the lack of clotting factors and pupillary sepsis could be seen in such women now the complications associated with the fetus is the prematurity which is the commonest one because as the abruption take place we need to immediately terminate the pregnancy so whatever the week of gestation is there we need to be terminated so the prematurity is the commonest uh, complication that is being associated with the fetal part uh, yes uh, if the major separation is there then fetal death fetal distress fetal anoxia could be seen so it is completely depends on the degree of separation because the major the degree of separation is there the more the fetus will be compromised so uh, if most of the part is separated then even though fetal death could be ruled out so these are the complications now uh, we'll talk about its management so the management of abruptio placentis completely depends on uh, degree of abruption the week of gestation uh, the status of the fetus that is the fetal heart rate so as soon the woman came to you first what all important things we must need to monitor are firstly we uh, make the patient to lie down in the bed and monitor all the vital signs so that we can have a baseline idea about the woman uh, by checking her bp pulse rate okay temperature then we'll assess the fetal heart sound we'll auscultate because the major the separation is there more the fetus will be compromised so we must monitor the fetal status then we'll send the blood uh, for the test like what is the hemoglobin hematocrit level as well as coagulation profile of the woman is there because uh, in need we can arrange for more blood and we can infuse women uh, with a crystalloid solution but most importantly in this abruption there is no conservative or any expected management is there the only treatment definitive treatment is the termination of pregnancy so whatever the week of gestation is there we immediately need to terminate this pregnancy because uh, if the major degree of separation is there then what happened the mother as well as the fetus may be compromised with the blood okay so what we can do as soon the woman came to you and you collect all the basic important data regarding the mother as well as the fetal uh, status then we'll check the status of mother uh, if the woman is in labor the most preferable mean for termination of pregnancy is the vaginal route most preferable if uh, the major degree of separation is not there means the abruption is there but it is not that much that worsens the condition of mother and along with that the fetal heart sound is also good okay uh, in such situation we can go with the vaginal delivery so in such situation most of women are in labor so what we can do is that we can augment the labor process by infusing oxytocin because oxytocin add in more uterine contraction and most importantly once the uterus become contract the primary mechanism for hemostasis is the compression of blood vessels and that is uh, to be done by oxytocin okay so oxytocin plays a very important role in compression of these blood vessels when the uterus become contract okay so uh, we can augment the labor process by oxytocin infusion and that will add in uh, further uterine contraction more intense contraction and prevent further separation of placenta okay so that is very helpful so we can augment 
the labor by oxytocin infusion and we can give ARM artificial rupture of membrane okay so that will also add in effective uterine contraction so once the effective uterine contraction establishes we can go with the normal delivery process okay so by this we can deliver the baby vaginally but suppose if the woman is not in labor the cervix is not favorable and the fetus is also compromised that is fetal distress is there and there is a major degree of separation in all these parameters we cannot go with a normal vaginal delivery we will go with the cesarean section okay so in such indication we will prefer cesarean section so if you are planning for cesarean delivery first make the woman hemodynamically stable and how how come it to be possible we can infuse more fluid uh, so that the volume could be replaced it could be resuscitated as well as in need we can give blood products as well like uh, fresh frozen plasma could be given so we can uh, elevate the level of fibrinogen because this all is used up in dic so to maintain the fibrinogen level and to maintain all the clotting factors uh, level uh, we just give blood product and fluid replacement to resuscitate the wo woman uh, from the blood which is being lost okay so in such situation first we will make the woman hemodynamically stable will correct the dic then only we will go with the cesarean section so these are the mode of delivery for abruptio placenta and it depends on the status of the fetus the degree of separation the condition of the mother so all matters a lot so in this lecture we have discussed with the diagnostic evaluation the complications are associated with this condition affecting the mother and the fetus and the management part Thank you.